Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Don't mind the beer bottles back there. One's filled with green cordial. <laughs> That's funny. I can't remember why it's filled with green cordial. There was a reason. Anyways, uh, I don't drink beer. Beer's disgusting. That's the doing of my boyfriend, not me. So you can blame him for that. I would assume you could probably tell my eyes so itchy. Why? You can probably tell by my voice. Um, I'm sick at the moment, so... It's really... Um, yeah, but this video is going to be me gouging my eyes out for five minutes because really itchy and I don't know why but that's not actually what this video is going to be about oh my god though it might be okay I can't see anything in the mirror so I don't know why they're so itchy but this video is about the time that I saw a ghost and I'll tell you um, a whole bunch of experiences that I've had as well this is a get ready with me so and I don't know how long I'm going to take to get ready but I hope I'm talking loud enough. I can't tell because like my ears are blocked. Um, and I bet you anything, you're probably listening to the fan right now. Like turn it off, but it's also 30 degrees in here, and I don't want to turn it off. Celsius, by the way, for my American viewers. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not turning it off. Um, sorry for that as well. And the first thing I am going in with is my Elf uh, Paula's Putty Primer. Okay, so let me just. Preface, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, let me just preface this video by saying that I used to um, live in like, what I would say was quite a haunted house. Um, that sounds funny, I'm not talking about like freaking October, Halloween, let's go to a haunted house and shit our pants, like I'm not, no, I meant like actual like spiritual activity in my house you know look how little I have left I am so sad oh the next thing is this now you know that I lived in like a haunted house sorry if you can hear my brother he's pissing me off too okay oh, okay it's just leaking we'll use more that's fine um instantly like explains why I would have seen a ghost. Um, but there was several like experiences and interactions and stuff that I had in this particular house that I'm going to be talking about that I used to live in for like nine years or something. I don't know. And I wasn't the only one, so I'm not crazy. Okay. Why is this not twisting? Oh, I'm twisting it the wrong way. That's why. Right. So I'm just going to use concealers. This is a bit darker. Um, can you tell? It's a bit darker. And this is uh, way too light right now, as you can probably tell. But, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so, at this house, I don't really know any history at all of this house. I didn't care to learn either because um, I was young. So, and when I say young, like, probably seven years old till I think I turned 15 I think that's when I moved out I don't remember maybe it was 16 um, so like quite a long span of time I look crazy I'll be right back okay I'm back um, I just set everything with this just in case you can see it I don't know if you can actually see it on camera I can see it in person in the mirror and stuff like that if you can see these two like light colored dots um i know they're there i can see them i just don't know what they are and they're not going away just so you know um what was i saying oh who cares i'll just start again so anyways so you know we lived in a haunted house and i have had uh, multiple experiences in that house and again it wasn't just me about 16 when I moved out and like the thought of um, 
like researching and trying to figure out the history of the house didn't ever occur to me but I would definitely say a child spirit lived in that house um, at least I would say there was definitely more than one but I am certain of a child spirit I would also guess it was a little boy but I could be wrong it could have been a little girl I just you know when you just get these feelings sometimes yeah I just had a feeling that it was a little boy uh, messing with me all the time um, you'll understand why I said that uh, later or maybe it's in the title in the title in the title like off the top of my head I can think of a funny little title that I could call this because um, it's basically what happened in some sense so it would be funny if that's actually the title we'll see I can't be able to do anything like extravagant I'm just gonna go like natural ish I guess um, going to be using this palette so the Morphe X Jeffree Star palette one day one night I should say at this point in time I should again preface that at this point in time uh, my eldest brother Jesse didn't live with us he used to and then he ended up moving back in but at this point in time when this all took place he didn't live with us so my little brother Zach had Jesse's old room if that makes any sense I'm just gonna say Jesse's room because it was Jesse's room for a long time and then ended up being Jesse's room again later on mine and Jesse's room were right next to each other like wall to wall um, so point being mine and Zach's room because it was Zach's room at this point in time god it's gonna get confusing uh, mine and Zach's room were wall to wall anyways our rooms were down a hallway uh, this hallway you could see from the kitchen because if you were standing at the counter facing the hallway the hallway was diagonally right there like right to the left not like wasn't straight ahead it wasn't all the way over there to the left it was like just so ever so slightly off to the left right there plain sight really easy to see you could see the hallway This is an iPad. Sit down there. Um, from the point of view though, you couldn't see down the hallway either side. You could just see the arch and then the wall on the other side. So it was just like, if you walked straight, you would have just ran straight into the wall. But obviously the hallway cut left and right. But from where you're standing, you can't see left and right. You can only see the wall. So, hopefully that makes sense. Probably not. So, I was standing in the kitchen uh, making lunches because that was my job when I was younger. I was probably, probably like 13 when this happened. That was my job. So, I was making everyone's lunches. I was making my lunch, Josh's lunch, Zach's lunch, and my dad's lunch um, for school slash work the next day. Okay? my mum and Josh uh, had to go to the shops to get things like milk, bread, you know, basic stuff. Um, so they left. So I was in the house with myself, Zach, uh, whose bedtime it was, he needed to be in bed, and, and that'll make sense later, uh, and my dad, but my dad was asleep. So I was meant to be the only one awake, okay? So yeah, I was meant to be the only one awake, which was fine, I didn't really care, except, you know, I was um, a little bit scared, I was always, I was always scared to be home alone in that house, not that I was home alone, I had two other people home with me, but they were um, asleep, so I was a little bit uncomfortable, but like, I couldn't just stop them from going to the shops, they needed to get stuff, and it's not their fault that dad fell asleep, he had a long day at work, I was kind of like, whatever, you know. Yep, no worries, um, see you when you get back sort of thing. And as I carried on making the lunches, I thought, keyword thought, thought Zach was playing games with me and trying to piss me off, knowing that I was the one looking after him now and he couldn't get in trouble by mum, or dad for that matter. So I thought he was just trying to piss me off and, you know, wind me up and whatnot. 
I mentioned the hallway before because this is where the hallway plays part in the story. So from where I was standing, I was actually standing, you know how I explained before if you were like just standing at the bench and you were looking forward, you could see the hallway? Well, I wasn't standing. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say here and failed to say is that I'm standing here at this angle um, and the hallway is, oh, you can't see it, the hallway is right here where my mum's head is. Um, that's the hallway. You can see a tiny bit of it over here. You can't see that, but just pretend you can. Um, I'll put a photo in after I do this video, but it's yeah, me just trying to show you that I'm standing here instead of here. I thought that Zach was playing essentially kind of like an off game of peekaboo with me, where he would poke his head out around the corner in the hallway and then whenever I would look he would hide back behind the corner because he didn't want to get in trouble that he was awake when he wasn't supposed to be. I thought that's what he was doing because he was a kid, he was only little, he was a little boy who liked to play games and stuff like that and liked to like annoy me as like a little brother, you know, that's what they do and if I was around 13 he would have been about 6 so you know right at that age to just play games and piss me off I was getting a little bit annoyed and I started you know yelling out Zach go to bed I wasn't yelling at Zach let's just say that I started yelling out every single time it would happen and it happened probably every 10-15 seconds I'm not joking um, Zach go to bed stop playing with me I'm not playing with you right now just go to bed mum said it's your bedtime I'm saying all these things every 10 or so seconds so yeah and then it continues doing so but I couldn't quite put my finger on how he was doing it so well he was just a six-year-old child so how every single time I even if I didn't turn my head even if I just looked over how he could perfectly time it and be completely not visible to me as I'm looking so I was just like surely there'd have to be some point where I would turn and I would just catch him but every single time I looked it was gone and I would look back down and I would be making the lunches and I could see it in the corner of my eye I could see he was standing there I could see he was poking his head out every single time I looked he was gone like he was never there and I was like okay how is this happening right now like I'm I've had enough I'm done I'm not playing games go to bed so this is where I shut my pants a little I got up the courage to walk down there, even though I know, I know I was terrified of that hallway. I always was, I always got a bad vibe from that hallway, I, that hallway always just gave me the creeps, okay, so I didn't like walking down that hallway in general. I had to walk down that hallway every single day to go to my room, but I would make sure all the lights were on, or I would make sure someone was like in the hallway with me. I don't know, I just, I was always scared of that hallway. I wonder why. I worked up the courage to walk down the hallway. And I walked down the hallway. Okay, so this is hard to explain. But when you go towards the hallway and you turn left, you walk down the hallway, but to get to Zach's room, you have to turn left again, and his room is over here. My room's right next to that, but if you go down the hallway and turn left, you can see my door straight away. But you can't see Zach's. So you have to go down straight to my door, turn left again, and then there's Zach's door. It was even creepier because, once again, I couldn't see, when even when I got down to the hallway, I couldn't see where Zach was. So, it was just creepy, you know, whatever. I stopped what I was doing, making the lunches and everything like that. I'm like waving this around like it's a goddamn wand, okay? I stopped what I was doing, I approached the hallway, and turn left and I can't see Zach anywhere so instantly I get this gut feeling like crap and I was like no no don't worry about it like he's probably heard your footsteps and he's run back to his bedroom so I proceeded to walk down the hallway turn left again Zach's not hiding around the corner and I was like okay he's definitely just hiding in his bedroom right so then I open his door mind you I didn't hear any door close I didn't hear any door open in the first place either and you would have heard it 
and I was kind of like, the fact that I had to open his door just solidified it just that little bit more. Open his door and turn on his light and he is knocked out. Like, out like a light. There is no way he has moved within the past hour. He is in a deep, deep sleep. And I started trying to wake him and stuff. I'm like, Zach. And he's not moving. And I was like, is he faking it? So then I actually did wake him up. And I was like, Zach, did you just come out to the lounge room? And when he's opened his eyes, that's when I knew he never was in the hallway. Because, you know, when you first open your eyes and they're a bit puffy and swollen, you can tell you've been asleep for a while. They're a little bit red as well. Yeah, that was his eyes. And that only happened when he had just woken up. I would know. He was my little brother. I saw him wake up all the time. And I instantly knew he, he, wasn't, he wasn't the one in the hallway one in the hallway so I was like oh my god I'm so sorry I go back to sleep um, but then I didn't say anything um, I'll see you in the morning sort of thing shut the door ran back down the hallway into the kitchen didn't want to be in that hallway any longer and just waited and waited and waited lies 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 I did not do that I went back into the kitchen like I said like all oh, that was true um, I continued making lunches but um, I don't know if this is a coping mechanism for anyone else, or maybe it's just me, but I started hearing noises. So, you know, obviously uh, the ghost has um, stopped playing the peekaboo game and uh, is starting to frighten me with other things by moving things around and making things uh, fall and make a noise and stuff like that. So I could hear noises and that was uncomfortable. So my coping mechanism was to just talk to myself, knowing that I was the only one that could hear me because dad, you cannot wake that man out of his slumber. So there was no chance he was waking up by me talking and Zach was down the other end of the house and trying to go back to sleep and I put a movie on for him as well so that he could just fall back asleep. Um, like I didn't put it on for him, it was already on but I just pressed play because it had finished. Um, so it would start again and so he wouldn't have been able to hear me because he had a movie going in his room. Um, and I just talked really loudly to myself. That was my coping mechanism. I was literally just like, kind of like I was giving instructions on telling someone else how to do what I was doing. I was saying each thing that I was doing really loudly so I was blocking out any sound and it worked. Like I wasn't, I didn't hear the sounds or if I did hear the sound, I would get louder. I probably looked like a maniac, but at that point, that was my coping mechanism. That was how I knew. Where did I put that brush? My my um my wand. Sorry. Um, that was how I knew how to deal with it. Was to just talk really loudly so I couldn't hear it. Um, I didn't have earphones or headphones back then um, because I probably broke them. Let's be real. So I yeah just talked really loudly to myself and waited for my brother and my mum to get back home from the shops. The other funny thing is like. Even though I could hear noises um, coming from other places, and this is also why I think there was multiple ghosts, is because even after I had discovered what was going on and realised that it was an entity playing peekaboo with me, it kept going. Like it stopped for like the first five minutes after I came back out, but then it kept going. So obviously I was kind of shitting myself, just a little bit, because um, I knew it wasn't Zach anymore. Um, but I can definitely, like, I can see it clear as day to this day. There's just a little boy poking his head out of the hallway. Um, not much hair, if any at all. Um, small, probably up to my hip in height. Um, just, it just looked like a little boy. If you know, you know. Like, it's, I've, it's hard to explain. Oh, and completely blacked out, like, complete shadow. You couldn't really make out dimensions of like an actual face, um, which is probably something I should have put, you know, two and two together, thinking it was my little brother. I couldn't, I couldn't see his face, so I probably should have realised, oh, it's not Zach. And Zach had longish hair, like it would have been noticeable, because uh, this entity didn't really have much hair. He continued to do little peekaboo around the corner, and um, I started talking to it. I don't know why that was also part of my coping mechanism, that if I was talking to it, maybe it would 
understand that I was scared and also made me alone a bit, but I think that's the opposite of what would happen. I don't know. Um, but I started talking to it, so every single time it happened, it didn't happen as frequently as before, but it would be like every like 45 seconds, um, I would talk to it and I would explain like, hey, I know you're there, I know you're just playing games and that you want to have fun, but I am scared right now and I would really appreciate it if you could just leave me alone or at least wait till my mum and brother got home. Um, but no, it very much so knew I was alone and that I was the only one awake and it knew to play games then. It also knew that I could see it and a lot of other people couldn't. So with my brothers and my dad, they never saw anything to my knowledge. I might have to double check that, but I probably won't check it in time for the video. I had seen it and my mum had seen it. You'll see, you'll understand later on. But basically, yeah, I ended up just talking to it and explaining that, you know, uh, it was scaring the absolute shit out of me, so if it could stop, that'd be great. Um, it didn't stop until my mum and brother got home. I heard the car pull in, and I was like, fucking yes, bro, I've been waiting so long, what has taken you so long? So the first thing I say when they get through the door, what took you so long? And they could kind of tell, like, oh, what the fuck's wrong with her? Like, we just went to the shops, like, what's the big deal? And I explained to mum what happened. And as much as you wouldn't want the response of like, oh, you're being silly, um, and you'd want to be believed and you don't want to hear that because you know you're not going crazy and you know what you saw sort of thing, as much as you don't want that response, you also do in the sense that you don't want confirmation because then you know that something's actually happening, especially as like a 13 year old girl. I, in a sense, I wanted to be, I wanted to be believed but I didn't want confirmation that what I was experiencing was real because then you know right now I did not want to walk back down that hallway ever again in my life because I knew that's where I lived and I knew that's where I played games and whatnot like I knew that's where it resonated like it was there in the hallway probably right outside my fucking door okay so I didn't want confirmation in that sense but that's what I got so I told mum everything that happened and then she proceeds to go Oh yeah, he does that to me all the time. Pardon? What what was that? He he does that he does that to you all the time. What? Pardon. Excuse me? Did you just did you just confirm what I was saying? Can you can you not do that next time, Mum? Because like fuck. Thank you, thank you. You know? Thank you for not making me feel crazy, but also like I didn't need to know that it was real and happening because it just scared me and fuck it does, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. So, I later found out that um, my mum from, again, from the uh, hallway, uh, where the hallway is, so in your peripheral vision, you can see the hallway from like diagonally semi behind you. If you're sitting on the lounge, you can see the hallway. So I later found out that my mum would be sitting on the lounge, you know, every other night, every night, whatever, watching TV, catching up on her shows before she goes to bed, and the ghost, I'm gonna just call him the little boy, that's what I believe it to be. The little boy would do that with her all the time, play peekaboo. And at first, she was kind of like me, where she thought the kids were playing tricks on her, and they were being silly and not going to bed when they were told and blah blah blah. And after a few times of it happening and checking, she realised it wasn't any of us kids, it was something else. So, she experienced what I experienced that night, pretty much every single night. She said multiple times, she, she tried to catch it with her own eyes and stuff like that, but every single time she'd turn her head or look over, it would be gone and it wouldn't be there. So, does that sound familiar? She said one time, you know, she was trying over and over and over again and couldn't get it, but one time, she didn't see it but she saw it disappear, if that makes any sense. So she saw the dark figure fade into like nothing. She got to just 
only for a split second, but she got to see what looked like a dark figure fade and disappear. That's me. That scared the crap out of me. My heart is beating so fast right now. My shadow in this door. I thought something was standing behind me. Okay, but yeah, that was something weird about it was you could only ever see it in your peripheral vision. It really liked to play games like that. But um, that's actually it for this video. Sorry that I didn't get much done visually. Um, I was so focused on telling the story and I knew that was going to happen. But I will see you guys next week for part two. Next week I'll upload part two. And we'll be starting from right where we are in next week's video in part two. Does that make sense? Don't forget, everything is going to be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Cue the outro. Sorry guys, I'll see you next week. Some things never change, never change. Mm -hmm. You'll break your back to make me feel again.